if you work in the construction industry, you discover that the work of a surveyor is very important. You don't construct to go into somebody else's property. You must know the boundary of your land. When you call a surveyor, a surveyor will go to the land, take a real survey measurement using surveying instruments. They will record it. Then you should think positions where the property will be virtually. You are planning. Everything is happening what? In your memory. Without drawing, how will I know what this guy is thinking? What you're seeing here is happening in his head. He's thinking of this is the land. This is what I want to do. If this thing is in this guy's head, the only way I can know what this guy is thinking is through AutoCAD or through any other card software. Because this is virtually happening in his memory. On this paper, he's looking at this paper and thinking this. That's why it's important that everybody should know how to draw. The next thing you should be looking at is how do you draw the boundaries of your land? The surveyor have come to the land, use his instrument, he have gotten all the dimensions. There could be land disputes in the future. The reason why United Kingdom and many parts of Europe have less land disputes is because of this on the screen. Many countries that have land disputes don't have this. They just rely on, my father told me that the boundary was there and they will start fighting. And before you know what's happening, two villages are already fighting because of that land. Because they don't have a record of survey boundaries. In the UK, if you trespass, the other person will go to the council. A surveyor in the council will bring out this. And in court, they will tell you who trespassed. Because the records are there. You can use CAD to design how you want your land, the buildings, to be arranged. No land is perfectly square. It's your house that is square. The land is not square. Where you live, the land could be like this. What we want to look at now is how you have collected survey data in the field, and you now want to represent it in AutoCAD. I will turn off my grid lines, but before then you open a new CAD environment. Step number one, pick the line two. Pick a point. Next, make sure your auto is turned on. Direct your mouse up, type 1000, and press enter twice. Next, pick the line tool again. Locate the midpoint. Click. Direct your mouse towards the direction, type 1000, enter twice. Next, click this, click move. Locate this midpoint. Click and click this end so that you have a cross like this. After a surveyor has done his work, he will now collect the data and go back to the office. There are many software that can help, but this is one method you can also use to represent what you have collected on site. This is a station. I will highlight this, go to line weight, Choose 0.3. Type line weight. Press enter. Check display line weight and click OK. I will highlight this. Change the color. Let me just go for yellow and press escape. I will highlight this. Type group and press enter. This is station A. Next, type dim style. Dim style is dimension style. And press enter. Click modify. In this dialog box, click test. Change this test to 300. If you don't increase this test, let me show you what will happen. Let me cancel it. If I come here, you see test and I click multi-line test. I click here, 
I will type A, capital letter A. If I type capital letter A here and click close, do you see that it's so tiny here? If I keep zooming open, it's there. The only way I can make this big is this. I will click this. I will say scale. Click on it. If I type 1,000 now, I've scaled it to 1,000. It's not big. I don't want to do this. That's why I want to go and change it before I will type it. I will click this and delete. Everybody, click on this multi-line test. Click twice. One, two, and release your hands from the mouse. Next, type capital letter A. You see here, 2.5. But you have to highlight this, and we're going to increase this. So I will highlight this A. I will change this to... Let me say 100 and press enter. Change it to A. 100, close. Can you see, I have increased the test. Then you now close. I will click on this, click scale. Click on it and type three, increase. So I've increased it and scaled it up to three. So let's leave this here. And let's go to the main thing we want to do here now. The A means station A. Now, I am moving from station A to station B on the boundary land. This is station A of the property. This might be station B. And this is station C. Station D. So this will have so many points. Each will have different angle. So this will take more time for the surveyor to complete. If it is square, it will be more easier for the surveyor. From station A to B is 38 meters, which is 38,000 millimeters. I will pick line, pick this center of this cross. I will direct my mouse up, type 38,000, and press enter twice. Next, I will click this line. Zoom open. I will click rotate. Click this point. If I type 33 degrees, AutoCAD will move in the anti-clockwise direction. Watch. If I type 33 and press enter, AutoCAD moved in this direction. But I have entered somebody else's property. I will do Ctrl Z. I will click this. Click Rotate. I will click this point. I will type minus 33. Press enter. This is the direction of my property now. Let me move this off here. This is the direction of my property. Let me check if it is correct. I will come here and click angular. One, two. Now, I will increase this, this 33 degrees. That's the direction of my property. For me to increase this, you see this? It's tiny. If I want to increase this, I will delete. I will type dim style. Enter. I will now click modify. Go to this test. I will increase this test. Let me say 300. I will increase this arrow to 100. Click close, OK, and click close. If I do this again, you see, it's now big. I think I will even reduce it. That 300 is too big. But at least I can now see my test clearly. I might reduce it to 100. It's just too big, and I will reduce the arrowhead. So let me click this, delete, dim style, let me go and reduce it, modify. This arrowhead, I will reduce it to 50. The test, I will reduce the test to 200. OK, close. Let me try it again. Click, one, two. I think it's a bit smaller now compared to before. I will click this, 
click copy click this midpoint and go to the other end of the line click and press enter now i am in this position from this position of a i will click copy i will copy this a and go here and click enter i will move this off a bit double click this and change this to b and click close so now this is station b of the land and this is station a of the land in this station b b to c is nine meters i will click line pick this point go up nine thousand enter twice from B to C is 65 degrees. I will click, click rotate, pick this point, type minus 65, and press enter. This is the direction of the property. I will click here, and I'm going this way. From C to D is 24,000 millimeters. I will enter twice. Click this, click rotate, Click this point, minus 105, press enter. This is the next direction. I'm clicking this, clicking this, click copy. Pick it from here, drop it here. This is C, and this is D, enter. So I will go here, double click, change this to C, this station C. I will double click, change this to station D. Next, I am moving from D to E. D to E, click the line command, pick this. This is 52,000. Enter twice. Click this, click rotate. Click here. This is minus 30 degrees. Enter. Next, I am now in this station of D. Click this, click here, and enter. This is station E. E to A. I'll just pick a line, click this station, and click this station, and press enter. This becomes my property measured i can use this for any land dispute if somebody trespass into my land i can bring this out and the whole measurement will be checked and they will know who trespassed into the other person's property this is where you can decide to divide the property into how you want to develop it I can say plot A, click, I can scale this to 10, this plot A, and I have here as plot B. You can decide to start developing plot A first, and in the future, you want to start developing plot B. If there is an existing house here, it's quite easy for you to draw either this sketch is just showing that a building will be located there. You can drop this here and scale this down to 0 0.5. I can copy this. There will be buildings here. This is how 
probably you want to develop the land, positions of the building. And you're going to measure all this for the architect to know, OK, there'll be a building here, there'll be a building here. Then you give the architect the measurement. The architect will now go into one of these areas and begin to develop it using the measurements from the surveyor. In one of our classes, we're going to start developing this land. What we just learned today is how to draw your land layout.